Okay, so today we are going to start our Japanese carp kite. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. We're gonna add these nice pretty streamers hanging from the tail. It's going to be three dimensional, which means it has height and width, but it also has depth. So it, there's a thickness to it. Um, and we're gonna hang them up with a little bit of string so that they kind of flow and float in the wind. All right, so the way that we start this assignment is we're gonna start with a tag board pattern and I have taken a black crayon and outlined the edge of the tag board pattern so that you could easily see it. But your tag board pattern, tag board pattern will look like this with no black edge. And you're gonna get a white piece of paper. Now if I fold my paper in half this way, my pattern will not fit. So make sure when you fold your paper in half, you fold it in half vertically and then your tag board pattern will fit. It's a tight fit. First thing that you want to do is find the fold or the center of your paper. So if I kind of open this back up where this crease is, that's the middle of my paper. So that's going to be the bottom and my opening is going to be at the top. I take my fish pattern and the straight belly edge of the fish, the straight part of that fish is going to be put right at the very bottom edge where the fold is, where that crease is, where I took my finger and rubbed to make sure that I creased it over. And you set it down on the paper and you use your pencil to carefully trace around the top and front and back edges. So here's the top edge. This was the back edge that I traced and now here's the front edge of my fish that I trace. When I remove my pattern, it should look like my pattern, which it does. So I've done that correctly. Now leaving my paper folded, I'm going to cut very carefully on my pencil lines. Both pieces of paper are being cut at the same time. If I open this up, you can see it's two pieces. So I leave it folded. I don't open it up and I cut very, very carefully. A little bit of scrap left over, you recycle that. And now you have, if you open it up, it should be all in one piece. If you did the step wrong and you put the fish on the wrong side of the fold, when you cut it out, it'll be in two pieces. And if it's in two pieces, I will tape it back together for you. So now you're going to draw the details of your fish. So if we look at our fish here, you can kind of see it has an eye, it has a line for the head, some scales, and some long skinny rectangles on the tail. So let's start with the head. Now look at my fish. The tail, the skinny part is down at the bottom. The wider part is at the top. The wider part is the head. The first thing you're going to do is you're gonna draw a curved line from where the fins meet the head, like a smile line, over to the center fold line. And then you're gonna draw another one going across, just like that. So it looks like a big W reaching across the paper. Then I want you to draw a straight line underneath the side, the top fins here. They'll be top when your fish goes like this, so they're side right now, to, to separate the edges of them. And one on one side, one on the other. And then we're gonna separate the tail from the body. Just like we separated the head from the body, now we're gonna separate the tail. So I'm gonna start here at the end of this line, and I'm gonna draw another W that goes over to the middle, sweeps the back round. So it's a big W going across. So this is step one with the drawing. Now I want you to add an eye, a nice big circle, then add a smaller circle and an even smaller circle inside. Try and do them about the same size. Okay. And now you need scales. You don't want to draw tiny little scales to where you have 100 or 50 of them. You want to draw nice big scales. So we're going to draw W's again, just like we drew W's here and here. We're going to draw them, but this time I'm going to draw one W that goes up in the middle and comes back and ends in the middle of the fish. So instead of doing one big swoop and then a second swoop to go across, we do two smaller swoops inside this space. And we do that again on this side. One, two, bringing it over. 
Now when we do our next W, we won't start here, we'll start at the bottom of this first curve and we'll swoop down and come up to the second curve. So it's a U and then finish the W, half the W going off that way. And then you bring it over across the fold up to the bottom of this curve, over to the bottom of that curve and then off to the edge. And then down here at the bottom, one more row. Bring them all the way down. So by drawing nice, big, sweeping W's, I only have three rows. One, two, three rows of scales. And so that makes a lot less scales than if I were to draw them super tiny and fill in. And now on the bottom here, long, skinny rectangles. Like, I like to call them French fries. They look like French fries. And I want you to do the same number on this side of the fold. Here's my fold. This side has three, so this side on the other side of the fold should have three. Try and keep them the same on both sides. Symmetrical. And then here at the very bottom, you got to put your name. So I'm going to write Mrs. Jackson. And then I want you to put the letter of your day. So I'm going to put day A. All right. Now that I'm finished drawing, I'm ready to start coloring in. So the first thing I want you to do is pick a color for, the, for your eye, the center color of your eye. And we're going to use crayons. So I'm going to choose, hmm, I'm going to choose a green color. And I want you to color the middle circle with the eye color. Color it in nice and heavy. Fill it in whatever color you want, but all, both eyes, try and make them the same color in the middle circle. Then you're going to take your black crayon and you're going to fill in the smaller circle with black. And then you're going to outline the outer circle, but you won't fill it in with black. You're going to leave it white. Just like that. Okay. Now, for the rest of the fish, it's all one color. So I'm going to bring back my original fish. And I chose to use a yellow-green color for my entire fish. It's not a rainbow fish, it's one color. So for today, I'm going to choose a purple color. And what you do when you're coloring in, start at the top and work your way down. We're going to start at the top of our fish, and our fish has um, the edges of the fish is left white, like a traditional carp kite. So we're not going to color right up to the tippy edge. We're going to start a little bit below, and I want you to color up and down short strokes, leaving the tippy top edge of your fish uncolored, not colored, like a traditional carp kite. Their mouths are always left white. And then you're going to finish and bring this color all the way down to the first big W that we drew for the head, the line that separates the body from the head. Now you can see I stopped coloring up and down when I was going around the eyes because it was just easier. But when you start up there, start up and down. Now when you color every scale in, you'll see that the edges of the scales are left white. They're not colored in. So we're not going to color the scale in all one color. So you're going to start at the top of the scale and you're going to color down, up and down, but you're not going to go to the bottom edge of the scale. You're going to leave that white there. And the reason that we do that is because that's just like a traditional carp kite. That's how they're colored in. The tips of their scales are left white, like shimmering. So color up and down each scale, leaving the bottom edge uncolored. Now, you're going to cover up your pencil lines when you do the next row, because the next row you'll color right up to your pencil line, but not cross over it, which will cover that pencil line up. And then again, you're coloring in your scale, so you'll color down, but not fill in the scale completely. You'll leave the, the edge of the scale white. I'm going to do that on this side. The middle scale here. Try and stay inside these pencil lines up here at the top. It's easy to cross over by accident. So just do your best. And finally, all right, 
So now I'm ready to do the final row of scales. All one color again. I haven't changed my crayon. That wouldn't be traditional. And now I'm going to peel some of this paper off real fast. Okay. And your hand might get a little tired and a little stiff and just shake it out, give it a break, and then keep going. All right, so now all my scales are colored in, but I have this space underneath these bottom scales. I want you to color that in all one color, one solid same color as your scales so that we kind of cover up those pencil lines that we see. All right, you're gonna color in your french fries. Sorry, my bracelet's making so much noise. And the very last thing you have to do is color in your top fins. And just like a traditional carp kite, we left the tip of the top fin white. So turn your fish to the side and color up and down, but leave the tip of the fin white. So you're not gonna color all the way to the edge of the paper. It's easier too. If you have to color the edge of the paper, it always kind of wants to catch on the crayon. So by leaving it white and not coloring it in, it makes it a little bit easier when we're coloring. And now your fish is completely colored. Perfect job. So now you're ready to turn it into a 3D Japanese carp kite. Right now it's a 2D flat and only has height and width. It doesn't have depth, so now we're gonna add the depth to it. So you're gonna flip your fish over and you're gonna choose some tissue paper streamers from the box. So I've chosen my tissue paper streamers from the box. And you can pick whatever colors you want. You're only gonna need four or five streamers. I probably took too many, so don't take too many. And then at the bottom where the tail is, so if you're not sure where the tail is, flip it over, look and see where your name is. That's the tail. On the back side, where there is no crayon, you're gonna put a line of glue that goes across the tail. Just straight across. And then you're gonna take your tissue paper streamers and you're gonna lay them in the glue. When you put them in the glue, I want you to make sure that the tissue paper isn't hanging off the side. Fit it inside the fish. It might be even better if you have a little bit of white edge on the side there and um, you don't make it hang off. So, And the tissue paper streamers themselves can hang off or cover uh, over, I'm sorry, overlap each other a little bit and touch each other, but they definitely should not be hanging off the side of your fish. So you've got to fit them inside the tail. They hang off the bottom of your fish, but not the sides. Right, so I've used four. I'm going to fit a fifth one right here so it overlaps a little bit more. All right, so there's my streamers hanging down, but not, I have a little bit of white edge on both sides. Now you're going to take your glue, and this is very important. You don't put any glue at the tippy top of your fish. Don't put any up here. You come down the side and across over the streamers, but that's it. So I'm going to put some glue down the side and across the streamers. And you're going to fold it over. Press it down. Just like this. I'm going to hold that down. Now this will probably be the end of the class because we need to give it time to dry. Um, what you can do is punch your hole, use the hole punch, push your hole punch as far deep into the fish as you can. It's okay if you punch through the eye. You don't want to punch too close to the edge or it might tear. Punch your hole. And then at this point, we'll call quits to the end of art for today so that we can give time for your fish to dry. Well, once your fish is dry, you're going to stuff it with newspaper. So you're going to get yourself some pieces of newspaper. You don't need a lot. And you're going to wad it up into small pieces. 
Maybe start with three pieces. Start with three and then we'll see where we go. So you're gonna take the piece, you're gonna open up the inside of, the open the mouth of your fish and you're gonna push this newspaper right inside your fish. And your fish will be dry. Mine isn't dry unfortunately because I am not giving it time to dry and set up. But your fish should be dry so that you can push this newspaper into your fish fairly easily. This is going in pretty easy. Now I don't want to see any newspaper hanging out the top of your fish and besides you wouldn't be able to get your string in here at the end so you do have to push it down in there. When you push it in, I don't want any holes, so I made a hole here by accident because I pushed and my glue is not exactly dry yet. But your glue will be dry, so you shouldn't end up with any holes unless you just push too hard. Now, if you're pushing your newspaper in and it just won't go in on its own, you could take a ruler and kind of shove the newspaper down, but you don't want to push too hard and make a hole in your fish because you should not have a hole anywhere on your fish. It should be closed at the bottom, it should be closed here and at the top. And then the final step is you're gonna bring me your fish and I'm going to take a piece of yarn and thread it through the two holes that you punched. I'm gonna bring the ends of the yarn together and I'm gonna loop and make a knot and now it can be hung up in the classroom and displayed. Beautiful carp, All right, good job.